Estamos aquí con Javier Moreno, director de marketing de la marca Catizá, Brugal, de varias marcas importantes de bebidas alcohólicas. Y estamos aquí en los premios que ellos están ahora mismo patrocinando, si se puede decir así, Javier, ¿no? Patrocinando estos premios. Eh, dime si quieres el nombre otra vez de los premios. Bueno, de Marketing Society sí. eh, ha creado los premios uh -huh. al espíritu pionero uh -huh. eh, en el mundo del marketing. Uh -huh. Y de hecho, bueno, pues es una de las sesiones que hay a nivel internacional para debatir, comentar uh -huh. y elegir cuáles son los casos de marketing que más han impresionado durante el año 2011 uh -huh. al jurado y vale. para proponerlos para una shortlist. Son premios, son, creo que son 20, ¿no? He visto una lista, sí, creo que son 20. 20, 20 hoy esperamos premios. sacar de 10 vale, y, y dejar bueno, 10. habrá unos luego, finalistas vale, vale. que serán elegidos como mejor, vale. uno de los mejores casos del año. Y hoy vais a sacar 10 y eso es pasar a otra, a otra siguiente etapa, ¿no? Con otros jurados ya más de otros países. Bueno, claro, al ¿no? final habrá un jurado que somos todos los partidos, unas 100 uh -huh. personas, vale, vale. y será una selección final. Vale, y todo esto está Catizar detrás, ¿no? Es decir, sí, es tu marca, la marca que tú... Con un partner que es de Marketing Society, que es una empresa... Inglés, británica sí. reconocida de prestigio sí, sí. que es quien está liderando la acción y quien está coordinando vale. con todos los parámetros uh -huh. de integridad vale. y de, de uh -huh. independencia de vale. estos ¿Y por qué Catizar? Que es una cosa, hay que decir, es una cosa interesante ¿Por qué una marca, en este caso una marca de whisky, se preocupa de que otras marcas ganen premios? Porque aquí lo que vais a, lógicamente vais a dar premios a otra marca, a otras empresas, servicios es decir, ¿Por qué Catizar eh, promueve todo esto? Bueno, primero ¿Cuál es la idea porque Catizar detrás? es una marca internacional y quizás no todo el mundo lo sepa uh -huh. eh, es una marca con una proyección mundial y que en muchos países es una marca de reconocido prestigio. Y quizás nos faltaba como entidad de marca a una serie de iniciativas o de actividades que realmente fueran más allá de lo que es vender un whisky o conocer un whisky en el punto de venta. Vale, vale. Y eso es un poco la, la idea de esta vale. acción. ¿Queréis utilizar también, lógicamente, para promover, promover esto entre el público, se puede entre decir? Profesionales, sí, profesionales, entre profesionales, vale, el mundo del marketing, vale, vale. para realmente poner a la marca donde corresponde por el prestigio que tiene a nivel internacional. Vale, aunque vuestro, lógicamente, vuestro público es el público de la noche, supongo, sí, en gran pero, parte, bueno, es decir, no solo el marketero. No son una cuestión vale. del día a día de, de hoy uh -huh. y de mi campaña de publicidad, sino vale. son una vocación de marca futuro vale. con unos valores y uno de los valores de la marca que uh -huh. nosotros sí transmitimos en nuestras campañas de publicidad es pionero. De hecho, uh -huh. las dos principales son pionero y aventurero. Es lo que caracteriza a la marca Catizar en toda su historia. Uh -huh. Entonces, lo que vamos a hacer con este, este uh -huh. tipo de premios uh -huh. es sí. premiar las campañas pioneras. Vale, vale, entiendo. De hecho, estáis aquí hablando de Tesco, que es una campaña muy pionera. Estamos sí. aquí todo el rato, lo estamos firmando aquí en marketing.com. Y las 20 campañas he visto eran todas de festivales, ¿no? Es decir, cada festival ha puesto una no, campaña o, porque, o no lo he entendido bien. En entre las campañas más famosas del año. Y de cada país. ¿no? Han surgido países diferentes, de hecho bueno. no hay dos del mismo país, uh -huh. pero se ha hecho con un criterio mundial de elegir las mejores vale. campañas mundiales. Vale, vale. Oye, pues muchísimas gracias, Javier. Ah. Gracias también a Catizac por ayudar y promover esta, este, este, este tema pionero en la publicidad, que creo que hace falta y que hay que cambiar un poco las cosas y, y muchas gracias. Y muchas gracias a vosotros por contarlo. Gracias. Pues nada, estábamos aquí en los Pioneering Spirit Star Awards de Marketing con Gonzalo Figari de, de Seis, con Félix de, de Contrapunto, perdón, Félix el apellido, Félix del Valle. Oye, que, bueno, contadme un poquito cuál es un poco la intención, por qué estáis aquí, sois jurado. Eh, bueno, es un festival de festivales, ¿no? Eh, ya he visto, son selecciones de distintos festivales, ¿no? La selección que hemos visto. Son los grandes premios de los festivales más importantes uh -huh. y lo organiza el Marketing Society del Reino Unido. ¿Quiénes son esta gente? ¿Quiénes son Marketing Society? Para que se entienda. Los principales directores de marketing de vale. empresas en el Reino Unido. Vale, vale. vale, vale. Un club de la Vale. Y bueno, este año, pues, se ha avisado que se ha sido patrocinador. Sí. sí, yo creo que lo importante es que también de esto es que una marca como Catizar se asocie con la marketing society y decidan dar unos premios no solo de publicidad sino de marketing no de anuncios sino de, de sí, ideas sí. y busquen la excelencia nosotros como creativos yo creo que estamos representados ahí en los festivales el sol, canes, etc. ¿no? Sí, sí. pero está bien también que un departamento de marketing tenga esta iniciativa y tenga curiosidad por buscar la mejor creatividad a nivel no solo a su a nivel de determinados países o sus países principales sino a nivel Mundial para saber qué está Pero sois directores, sois directores creativos aquí también. Sí, aquí no está la gente marqueteros, aquí no hay, ¿no? Sois creativos. ¿no? Que con los clientes trabajas en equipo. Yo creo que al final, para que salga una idea, no solo es que los creativos, al final tienes que tener un cliente de la mano. Yo creo que por eso estamos juntos, para valorarnos entre todos, para discutir. Bueno, está el equipo de marketing de España, está el equipo de marketing internacional. ¿Por qué habéis, por qué habéis sido seleccionados? ¿Por qué estáis en esta selección vosotros y nosotros? ¿Y cuál es el criterio por qué estáis aquí? Gonzalo. Eh, una, una primera edición se ha hecho con los que conocían eh, vosotros trabajáis con... Nosotros trabajamos con esta marca. La, la cuenta de Catizá, 
Cotizar y entonces, vale, pues, tiene que ver con no, Cotizar. Tiene, soy... eso tiene que ver. Vale, <risa> vale, vale, tú también, de seis no, también. Vale, tenéis ahí relaciones. Vale, vale, habéis entrado por ese lado. Ahora es interesante lo que dice Félix, no solo ver las ideas, los diseños, sino lo que hay detrás de la idea, ¿no? Que eso es hoy más que nunca lo que hay de lo que los clientes buscan, porque eso genera ventas directas, como algunos casos. Entiendo. Y, y por lo que veo, lo que veo que va a ganar para DC por el momento va a Tesco muy adelante, ¿no? Por la parte española, que sois aquí el jurado español, es, es Tesco la que está, ¿no? La campaña de Tesco, que la hemos visto ya el año pasado en, en Cannes, ¿no? El famoso metro de Corea, ¿no? Corea del, del Sur, es la que, la que es más pionera y que va, va por delante, ¿no? Porque habéis dicho varias, varias personas, ¿no? Que... Es una idea diferente y que mezcla todo, mezcla, mezcla un exterior, mezcla medios, mezcla mobile, mezcla experiencia, mezcla... Ya, pero lo que pasa es que ya, ya ha sido ganadora, ya la, hemos, ya la conocemos todos, no es nada innovador, no nuevo, nuevo, la, la gente del sector, claro. Nosotros la conocemos, pero yo creo que también dentro de, de, de las ideas finalistas, eh, para mí, es la, es la que más... Ya, ya, la que más os ha... Vale, vale. Junta, junta lo que vale, vale. antes, el vale, vale. De, de un departamento de marketing, uh -huh. de tener, tener yeah. una idea brillante, una idea única y diferente, y que encima venda, uh -huh. pero no en el momento. Luego la misa es la idea de Tesco, y lo que hablamos hace un momento, ¿no? no hay un buen titular, no hay una buena gráfica, uh -huh. no hay una, lo que uno antes entendía como gran premio. ¿no? Vale. Eso ya no hay. Entonces, vale. Ahora lo que hay es una idea mucho más yeah. potente que, que todo vale. esto. ¿no? Yeah. Yeah. Entonces, la, la, la campaña que ahora dejáis... <risa> <risa> la campaña, gracias. La campaña, pero tiene buena pinta, ¿eh? Tiene buena pinta. La, la campaña que ahora elijáis es la que va, va a ir a otro, a otro nivel ya europeo o mundial o qué? Lo que, lo que, saque, lo que sacáis de aquí, no sé si va a ser Tesco. Hay unas, hay unas reuniones, o sea, ¿Sí? en Oporto, va a haber otra en Londres, Vale, sí, que quedan varias. Está Madrid. Esta es la de Madrid entonces, ¿no? Esta es la reunión oficial de Madrid, vale. Calculo que siendo las tres ganadoras, ¿Sí? habrá luego una reunión final para vale. elegir la gran ganadora y la segunda. Y esa se entrega, se entrega el premio en, en Londres supongo ¿no? en la sociedad no, 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 en el grupo este ahora el tema es como pensar que aquí es que es un festival de regreso porque ya se empieza a ganar un premio sí, es eso es lo que decía que no es nuevo para los que estamos ya en el sector es una reconfirmación de todo lo premiado este año vale, vale vale es lo que más le gusta a esta organización sí, sí, sí aquí hemos visto que hay varios aquí hay varias no, cada se ve que cada cada campaña tiene su festival debajo no viene Red Apple Festival no son campañas que los festivales han ¿Han propuesto? ¿Por qué, por qué pone siempre el festival debajo de la campaña? No, son los, los grandes premios, los grandes premios de cada, de, de cada pasta. Vale, y están aquí todos juntos. Sí, pero el festival de, de Sudáfrica. Sí, sí, sí. sí. España. sí. Pues, algunos que conocemos más, otros que conocemos más. No es el sol en España, no es el sol en España. Digo porque pone a DC, no es el sol, pero bueno. Ya, ya, ya. ya, ya. Está, yo sé que está aquí FIA, bueno, uh -huh. los sí, sí. premios. Sí, sí, el EFI, EFI Worldwide, pues entonces ¿por qué no está el sol? No, no querrán, bueno, no, no van a llevar un acuerdo o no los... El año que viene tenéis que proponerlo. Tenéis que proponerlo ese año que viene. Muchas gracias por todo. Gracias por estas respuestas. Pioneers with us in this project, so that's why we really are thankful for you to to, to be with us today. But uh, I'm going to give the honors to to Gremaza, who is the organizer of the of the meeting, who will lead us into the the meeting. Okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not going to stand up, but just because I'm quite small, I'm, I'm, <laughs> so at least you can see me for a short while. But behind these uh, top hats and decorations. Uh, So thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Graham Martin. Uh, I have two roles. I am chairman of a, an agency in Scotland called Frame. We are partners uh, at GCs uh, in, in Madrid as part of uh, an ICANN uh, international network. But I'm also a director of an organisation called the Marketing Society. Mark Society is a, a, a UK-based organisation, but we have connections throughout the world. And we're a membership organisation, uh, but we, our, 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 our mission, our purpose, is to inspire bolder marketing leadership. And this is what this award is about, is to try and understand what inspires us all to, to do great marketing and communications work. So there is a, a programme uh, that we will try and follow. I know we're in Spain. Uh, and I know that you have your own rules, <laughs> uh, but we try and keep to some sort of process. 
And so and we will introduce ourselves to each other. I know some of you know some of the people in the room, but you don't all know everybody. So we will introduce ourselves. And Jim will speak on behalf of Cassie Sark, who have supported this award. Uh, and I think it's um, I think it's uh, fantastic that uh, uh, Cassie Sark gets behind a new and hopefully a successful award. So it's great to have their support and the support of my team. Uh, and then we will discuss, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll keep, I won't explain all uh, the process just now, but we'll discuss the ideas. The objective today is to go from 20 ideas down to 10. Uh, and, and not to choose a winner, but just the, the best 10, for a variety of reasons. These will be presented at a festival in Edinburgh, uh, of the places. We're creating a, a marketing festival. Edinburgh has the biggest arts festival, cultural festival in the world in August and uh, so we're creating a marketing festival because we think it's important that marketing is understood and appreciated as being essentially a creative industry and therefore in an arts festival it's appropriate that we fly the flag for creativity in marketing. So we have a marketing festival uh, and Gonzalo is actually going to speak at this festival uh, and we will present the ideas that we uh, agree to do <coughs> that are some of the best in the, in the world. So, uh, so the introductions, uh, because we have, we've got limited time, we'll keep it quick, but if you could tell us your name, your company, what you do, uh, and perhaps to give us some sort of indication of your personality and your character, if you could tell us what your favourite Hollywood movie is. Uh, and that just gives us a little bit of a sense of who the real person is behind the, the, the company. So, uh, so Frame Arthur, I'm with the Marketing Society in Frame, uh, Chairman of Frame and Director of the Society. Uh, my favourite movie, uh, Cliché, I'm certainly age, uh, but The Godfather. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a discussion every time I see this, which one? Godfather 1, one two. Godfather 2, two. Godfather mm -hmm. 3. Uh, Godfather, uh, 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 I thought it was Godfather 3, which is very, it's not the best, it's the worst, but Godfather 2 is, in my opinion, the best. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You don't have to stand up, but uh, if you want to, you can, if you want to wear a top hat, or a, you can do it whatever you want. So, we, will, uh, we shall go around this way. Okay, my name is Hans Nite, I'm the assistant manager for Capisar here in Spain, and I work for Maximum, and uh, I'm the <laughs> uh, later I will tell you some. <laughs> we'll come back to you. Okay? We're not judging the uh, movies, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Marga Langman. I'm founder and creative director of Mao Creative Think Tank. It's not Mao the beer, it's just the <laughs> <laughs> house. Everyone makes this uh, with my co-founder, Oti. And uh, my favorite movie I don't remember the big one, but the last one I, I, I saw and I liked it, it was one of Shane. It's mm -hmm. a British one. Mm -hmm. And the director is Alexander, no, Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. Funny mm -hmm. name for. And. Okay. Okay. Uh, David Proudlock, uh, founder and creative director of Inkling, who are a retained agency by Cutty Sark. Uh, my favourite film is Pulp Fiction, uh, because I think the dialogue is just absolutely incredible. It's not like a wasted word. And it's the ultimate indie flick. Mm -hmm. My name is Ricardo Rias. I am from MPT Media Contacts and I am <coughs> the general manager here. Yeah. Um, I have many favorite uh, films also, uh, but uh, there is one that probably is one of my favorites, which is Max Point from Woody Allen. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. Yes, my, my name is Javier Piedraita. From, I'm from the press, so I'm not from the jury here. So I'm filming here and making photos now. <laughs> and from my, my portal is Mark I say. And my film, I film I, I liked, I saw some weeks be, uh, before when I was flying to Australia, I saw a lot of good films because it's a long flight, so the plane has a lot of, a lot of, no, really, really good films in the, 
in the big uh, plane, and I like it a lot, uh, The Artist, no? because it's a very different film. No? And the Artist is a new film, it's, it's so different, no? black and white, and the story, and it's without, without uh, the voice, so it's the film I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, okay. right. I'm uh, Felix Del Valle, Felix Del Valle. Uh, I work in Contrapunto BBDO. And uh, I don't have a favorite movie, but I will tell you about the two last movies I have seen and that I like. One, it was Drive. I think it's a nice movie well, with a very nice music and, you know, it's, it's, I think it, it didn't want any Oscar, but <laughs> it's a nice movie. And uh, the last one that I saw two days ago, it was um, The Idols of March. It's about politics. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, and yes. I would recommend you oh, yes. the movie. Yes, because, yes. You know, yes. It's interesting. Yes. It's a nice, nice script and it's a good movie. Hi, um, I am Gonzalo Figari, uh, president of the Six, the Six. Um, and from my favorite movie, um, I for that next five seconds, lost the translation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing all the time this stuff and, and other stuff. So. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, my name is Javier Moreno, I'm the marketing director at Maximum Spain for the Edmonton Group brands, which are Catizac, Brugal, uh, Macallan, Highland Park. And uh, about the movies, I like a lot of movies. Uh, not a Hollywood one, I like uh, very much Cine Cinema Paradiso, yeah, yeah. Italian one. Mm -hmm. But if I had to choose a Hollywood one, I would uh, choose uh, the, the Lord of the Rings because uh, I read the book when I was very little, and it, uh, it's a book I have read may, uh, some other times in my life. And uh, the world that is created uh, is very attractive for me. Mm -hmm. I am Otilio Gonzalez, I am the other creative director and founder of Mouth in Town Creativo. And my favorite film is not a film, it's a TV show, it's The Wire, it's a series mm -hmm. based in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I think the next good movies are not in cinemas, are in TV. Yeah. This is my favorite. Okay. <laughs> my name is Manuel Bardalagana, I'm working in Inavas Media, in MPG Media Contacts. I'm the brand manager for Maxi, for all the brands, and of course, uh, Gadget Sarai And my favorite, favorite <coughs> film, um, one very old one is the Sting. Sting because I think it's very surprised at the end of the film and it's fantastic, it's incredible. Everything I think everybody knows this film. Um, more things that I like is the technology. My passion is the technology, the innovation, the digital, because my class, my background is around digital marketing and things like this. It must be a reminder. It's a two-star film. It must be into technology and to romance. Interesting combination. Um, hi everybody, my name is Jen McLaren, I'm the brand manager for Quasi Sark at the Edmonton Group in, in Scotland. My favourite movie, I said this last night and I got laughed at, but I'm going to say it again because it is. Um, my favourite movie of all time is The Jungle Book. Um, I remember, it's the first film I, re I can remember watching as a child and whenever I'm feeling down or whatever, I put it on and it makes me smile. So, The Jungle Book and I will take all the abuse that I can remember. <laughs> Hello, my name is Natalia Martinez. I'm working for Media Wealth Impulso, that's a BTL online agency for Capital on this project. And my, about a film, that's not my favorite, but I think animation, Pixar animation, is incredible. Mm -hmm. I like so. <laughs> uh, my name is Paco Rivera. Um, I'm Client Services Director uh, for Cathy Sark at uh, Contrapunto BBDO. I'm working with uh, Felix. And uh, yeah, very difficult to pick up one single movie. But because of all this <coughs> stuff and the Cathy Sark brand uh, behind us <laughs> and so on, I, that in inspired me something like the good fellas, <laughs> which is. Uh, very good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this feels like a, a mafia meeting. <laughs> 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 okay, Zabu looks like the Godfather. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, well, thank you, thank you. You're all very welcome. <coughs> uh, before we start the judging process, can I ask uh, Jennifer to say just a few words on behalf of uh, Custis House, please? Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to thank you very much for coming. Um, I know everybody's very busy, and um, it's a busy time of year, so we really appreciate you giving up a couple of hours um, on a Friday to come and help us with this. 
I wanted to just give you a bit of background as to why Cutty Sark is involved in this award. Um, it might be strange that the Marketing Society and Cutty Sark are you know, having meetings around the world. Um, Cutty Sark was created to, to be an international brand. So unlike other Scotch whiskies that were created in Scotland and then exported, Cutty Sark was created for export. So it's always had a very international um, outlook and international focus. So we felt that, that it was a kind of natural fit. Um, the second reason, and the reason that this is, these are the pioneering um, spirit awards, is that Cutty Sark was created to be different. So um, the whiskies at the time were very dark, quite heavy, quite challenging. Cutty Sark was created to be light and easy to drink and easy to mix. So it really, um, it really challenged the convention at the time. It was a really brave move um, by Berry Brothers, who, who founded the whiskey um, at the time. You know, they, they compared Scotch whisky to red wine and they said, well, what's the white wine equivalent? So they wanted to create the white wine of the Scotch whisky world, which is, is why they created Cutty Sark. So, um, it's kind of pioneering um, and kind of bravery has always been at the heart of the brand. Um, so that, that's just a little bit of background as to why we're involved in, in the awards. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, well, on, on, on with the awards, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, it is explained uh, in, in, in the book here at the, at the front page, but just uh, to take you through the process, um, the Marketing Society, uh, we put a, a research team with uh, students at the university, uh, and, and the, the brief was just to select a, a range of ideas from marketing awards programmes throughout the world that they found inspiring and interesting. And we just wanted to make sure there was a range of countries and markets, brands, sectors, disciplines, advertising or PR or, uh, or design, um, that we might just provoke a uh, discussion about it being a great marketing idea. So, so we have them, they're on the website, you've seen them. Um, we're asking, we're, we have five panels like this. We had one in Glasgow about a month or so ago. Um, okay. We'll continue. Uh, we can uh, eat whilst we talk. The um, so we had five. We had one in Glasgow. Uh, last night we were in Porto, uh, and a similar session to this. Uh, today in Madrid. Uh, we will let by by the end of today we will have decided ten uh, ideas that we'll present at the marketing festival in Edinburgh in August. We then go on to New York in September and then back to London in October. And by the end of the year, with your help, uh, we will try and put together a short list of 20 fantastic ideas from 2011 and 2012. In 2012, we will ask the judges, and by the end of the year we'll have 100 judges, We'll pair you up with uh, people within your own country and other countries uh, to select other ideas from 2012. We'll give you uh, an awards program and ask you to select between that panel there uh, an idea from 2012. And indeed any other idea that you have seen that has won an award somewhere in the world. Not your own agency and, and not your own country. So, so it's entirely independent and partial and has integrity. So uh, that's the process. The, um, so tonight we have asked uh, today, tonight was very good, uh, I'm sure today will be awesome. So the, the criteria we ask you to judge, you know, what, what is a great idea? We'll all have different opinions about that and it'll be interesting to hear what yours are. Uh, but we, we ask you to judge, uh, in your opinion, what was a pioneering idea? So what was new and innovative and groundbreaking? So that was a key criteria. But also, was it bold and brave? Uh, was it inspiring? Was it, uh, uh, was it well executed? Sometimes you get great ideas, but it's poor in the execution. Uh, and what your <coughs> opinion would be about the chances of success? Obviously, in some of these, there are some measurements. But we know in marketing awards, sometimes the measurements are a little bit creative and open to interpretation. So, uh, issue of sense of whether it be successful or not. 
So we focus that the, the uh, one of the inspirations that we have in the Marxist Society in Scotland is David Ogilvy. Uh, David Ogilvy, who uh, was uh, a Scot, he claimed to be a Scot, he was actually born near London, <laughs> he had red hair, he wore a kilt, his father was from the Highlands, so he claimed uh, to be Scot, uh, and he went to school in Edinburgh. Uh, and he was proud to be Scottish, and he thought being Scottish actually made him different. Uh, and it made, certainly made him different when he was in New York, in Madison Avenue. But uh, he came up with the expression, the big idea. Uh, so when we all talk about the big idea, and most agencies and most clients are looking for the big idea. Uh, he defined it in, in uh, five, five ways. One, we spoke of this earlier, but uh, did it make you gasp? Did you get a real ripple of excitement? When you heard the idea, you saw the idea, did it have an emotional, physical effect? Do you wish it was your idea? Do, do you say, damn, I wish I had come up with that idea? Is it truly unique? Uh, being a researcher, as David Obi was, it, his expression was, did it fit the strategy to perfection? So it was a really tight fit behind the strategy. And, and lastly, would it be around for 30 years? Uh, and in his career, he, and he did a lot of great work, as we all know, he, he, he thought he had a maximum of, he created five big ideas in his career. So that's kind of what we're looking for. It's for big ideas uh, that are pioneering. So the way we're going to do this is, um, between each course, to start, um, and feel free to eat and listen to other people. Um, I'm actually going to go through the guest list in alphabetical order here. And uh, we're just going to ask you to tell us what your favourite idea was, and just give us some reason, some rationale why it was. And we'll go around the table. Uh, everybody is judging, apart from our friend from the media and our sponsor. But he can also, no? <laughs> he, he, he has not done his homework. <laughs> so he's, 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 he's ineligible. Okay. He is recording the music. But, uh, <laughs> so first up, uh, Manuel from the MPG. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could tell us your favourite idea, I'm going to take the scores and the ones that get the most point, get the most uh, scores. Uh, we'll add them up at the end and we'll see the top ten go through. Okay. For me, one idea that I liked a lot it was the Tesco. 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 Because I think it's, uh, the innovation behind this idea is really nice. Um, everything, everybody knew this, this case before, and it's because um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really easy just to put your store out your store, yeah, in the underground, and to use the capabilities of the mobile to, to buy things. And I think that it's going to be a revolution in the future, and it was uh, the first brand that yes. used this kind of touch point. And I think behind this idea, I don't know if Tesco is selling a lot of products with this uh, with this technology. I don't think so. But I think it's the, the point of the future, the innovation uh, that is behind the idea. Yeah. Had you heard of this idea before? Had you, uh, were you aware of this no. campaign? Okay. If anybody strongly disagrees, uh, then feel free to strongly disagree. Just Yes, the other thing I would ask you to do, you have a napkin, Randy, uh, Kaji Sark here, uh, and uh, as you know the, the story behind Kaji Sark was it was actually invented, created on a, on a napkin similar to this, so they designed the idea, the Scottish artist. Um, so I'd like you to, during the course of the meal, the idea that most excited you, most inspired you, if you could just write your name, uh, what the idea is, and why it excited you so much. Just mm -hmm. a few words. We're going to use this on our website. So, um, so just uh, during the course of the meal, uh, I'll collect them at the end of the meal, just uh, what your idea was and why it was so exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll, we'll perhaps talk at Tesco as we go through. Uh, mm -hmm. But thank you for that, Manuel. Thanks for starting us. Um, uh, uh, Rosa's not here. And, uh, so it'd be Anna, Anna from Maxi. So can you uh, tell us your favourite idea? My favourite, only one. Only one? <laughs> only one. It was Tesco as well. Mm -hmm. I, I already heard about that idea and I watched this in YouTube and I think it's it's quite pioneering because it's um, 
there's nothing you have to do. You have to go shopping, but sometimes you don't have a time. So what they did, it's like put the other elements you need in uh, in a place where you always go, which is a field on the underground. So I think it's it's really appealing because it, it gives the opportunity to the people to, to do something they have to do, but in a different way. Is Tesco in Spain? No. no. Yeah, we don't have Yes. In, in, in the UK, Tesco is taking over the world. Yeah. Mm. It's absolutely dominating. Brands hate them yeah. because they are so difficult to deal with. They, they mm. price, price, mm. price. Um, and the consumer uh, does not like the brand. <coughs> so it is, it is an unloved, very successful, but unloved brand in the UK. <coughs> and it's now going for world domination. <laughs> So beware, it's coming to Spain soon. It's a difficult market to enter. Is it? Is because, it? <laughs> because of the French and or because of the Spanish. Yes, exactly. Yes. exactly. Yeah. Culturally. So uh, no, no, because, it's because it's are, dominated by... Uh, yeah, dominated by a uh, couple of three uh, French groups and one yeah. Spanish one that is, you know, rising very yeah. quickly. And it's becoming a beloved brand. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, it's in both front of consumers. Successful and, and, yeah. and, and, and emotional as well? Yeah. Not in front of the That's providers, I guess. Yes. But yes, in front it's of the consumers. It's a good champion. Yeah. For price well, and for quality. And quality. Yeah. Why is it love? Just because of price or brand? Uh, it, because of the quality. Yes. Uh, it's a consumer more, champion. But at least that is what people spontaneously uh, uh, claim. Them. I think that it's also because uh, people feel that this brand is taking care of them, basically. That they are really interested in them and therefore they will they will take care Via quality, via price, or via whatever. Yeah. Today was surprised because uh, I read that this uh, chain is Mercado now. Okay? Okay. Yes, and uh, they have had really success with private labor. Especially in the spirits, in the rum and the whiskey and so on. They have just put on the on the on the label the F of Facebook in the private label. They are creating a brand around the private label. Yeah. Everything is changing. Okay. Uh, Felix. My favorite, I have uh, three favorites, but uh, above all, <laughs> above all, yeah, yeah, you above all. You to tell us about number two and number three during the dinner. Yeah. So, so, so for now, just number one. But above all, I think it's uh, the Tesco staff, because uh, <laughs> we all make ads here to sell things, but actually you, you have an, an ad that <coughs> it, sells, uh, for it, it sells for itself. It makes something real good for you. Uh, it, that, which is you don't have enough time for going to 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 the market, for going to to any place for for getting your yeah. your shopping, and you got it right there in the street, in the metro, in the subway. So I think it's the dream of a uh, marketing department and the dream of an advertising agency yes. having something bold, ha having something unique, new, and that has never been done before. And something that, uh, for sure, it will be copied. It will be we will be seeing that again and again with a different, with a lot of different brands. Itself, itself. So that's that's my my one, my favorite one. There's no obligation for everybody to vote for Tesco, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a bit of a trend here. <laughs> Gonzalo. The same, I think that Desco is... But something that is very interesting is that Desco, it's not a uh, creativity. You know, uh, the, the piece, the work, you don't have a nice headline, you don't have a nice art direction, it's a, it's a part of a supermarket, nothing else. So the idea is behind the idea, it's not the idea. And that's the issue that I think that is not only a, a creative idea, I think that it's a planning idea. It's more, most, than a planning idea than a creative idea. Maybe a skitty is, is, is more fun and more creative, and I prefer to create something like skitties are like the other stuff, no? Yes. But I think that the other stuff maybe could invented by the chauffeur of the agency. You, know, you, don't need, you don't need to be a creative to create this campaign. You don't need to be an advertising guy to create this campaign. Uh, this is more technology or whatever, but it's, it's a smart guy today. Oh. Why can't I do that? Whatever. 
But is there not a, a, an element of creativity in the planning and in the strategy? And yeah. Not in the piece, not in the work that you see. No? The execution see, is not. Yeah, the execution. If you see all the executions that we are looking, all of them are creative. Instead, that the one that you have to turn the page or whatever, but you are looking at creativity. This is not creativity, but it's creativity. It's a different type of creativity. It's creation. Maybe no, not creativity. No? But it's not, you know, uh, I would say, no? okay. maybe if you have to tell, have a good headline. The best headline of all the things that we saw is not here. The best art direction of all the things that he saw is not this. So it's the idea. Okay. But I would say that creativity isn't a headline or art direction anymore. <laughs> that's yeah. like yes, a, that's an old way of looking at it. I think that it's time. not absolute, nothing, mm -hmm. in this market. So maybe tomorrow the best is don't, don't be a trendy topic. <laughs> maybe it's the, the best campaign for tomorrow. To I think it's certainly a challenge for agencies yeah. to be creative not just in art direction and copy, yeah. but to be in media and, and uh, product. And, uh, and I think there's some ideas in here that uh, are poorly executed but fantastic ideas. And I think uh, the challenge is to get both together and to have the fantastic product or media idea with fantastic inspirational creative work to go with it if you can get the two. But, uh, to divide them into two different camps, I think, is a mistake. I think to get them together is, That's true. is a perfect position. I think if you try to go creative with this idea, it wouldn't be as good an idea, because it has to be functional. That's the kind of beauty of the idea, is that you can actually interact with it and get your shopping whilst you wait at a metro station. Whereas if you dress it up so it's all like spinning screens and feels like an iPad or something, you just get in the way of what is a really strong idea. That's, and the execution is really good because it's so simple and you can actually do it. It's a tool. It's in a store. It's in a stand. You use the the billboard to make a stand to sell. <laughs> like, uh, you know that uh, here in Spain we have a very famous campaign last year, uh, the pills for yeah. the contra uh, <coughs> uh, It's the same that like, uh, Red Cross, but they change the sticker for a pack of candies. So you know uh, you can change the the stuff. All the, the not not only the headline, not only the design. It's all the do you think, uh, obviously, it was Korea, I think, that has taken this idea and has worked very well in Tesco, uh, number one online retailer, <coughs> is very impressive. Do you think it would work in other markets? Would it work in Spain? This media, this idea? Um, maybe. Maybe. If, if, no, if nobody make it today, because of something. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, each day, more brands are putting BD codes in this. Uh, you, you, each day is more, it's not, it's an advancing stuff, but uh, not like uh, Copenhagen uh, or, or maybe Edinburgh. You, everything have a BD code. Everything mm -hmm. here, not everything, not have a BD code. But we are it's running it's to there, yeah. and now we are working also with um, the index images. I don't know how to say. There is now applications that. I put my mobile uh, in the picture of Cristiano Ronaldo today in uh, Paris, and I could, could see the video of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the index is uh, taking out the video, and we are taking an index image. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, thank you. Uh, apologies for pronouncing your name. Is it Otillo? Otillo. Otillo. I love Tesco, but I am going to say another thing. You may control it. This is the most boring. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, the Romanian chocolate, yes. <laughs> and I'm going to say you why. Uh, I think here in this table, everyone are sellers in one way, another way, advertising sales, and it's good, I don't blame. But I love when uh, marketing advertising is more than sell, when ads, I think the very, very good ads uh, um, finds a way to speak with the not with the consumer, with the person, and and make to uh, and challenge the person and challenge the consumer to say why and uh, why and why thing is the that kind of of, of ads maybe it's only one or two uh, or, or two uh, uh, a few year that makes in the people in the dinner not in this dinner we are only uh, in dinner normal say 
have you seen that? Have yes. you, what do you think? Yes. This, that kind of uh, ad to challenge the consumer and uh, makes people say, who are you? And this, I think this campaign with this wonderful play of, of changing the Romanian for American is very strong because we, in Spain we love and we hate two Americans. We have this uh, feeling of we love it but we don't like it. Yes. I, if I, I think in Spain, for me it was really crucial to say, I love, I hate, I need it, I, li I like his, uh, his product but I don't want to be American or I don't want to be American but I don't want to confess. And for me, that kind of, kind of campaigns, there's very few that challenge the consumer and makes the consumer think about yes. what he thinks. For me, is is what I, I become a creative for that kind of campaigns. Yes. I don't know if I made yeah. one or two, but I try, every, every briefing I try to say, how can I say to the consumer something deep yes. who move, obviously, for for buy because this yes. that's the game but a bit more i want to i think the great advertising is part of our culture yes it's not only a passing uh, fashion yes i think uh, in spain uh, we will have campaigns we all remain and are part of our culture we make a a, a 60s uh, um, doku we put campaigns and in the 70s and the 80s i think this campaign is going to be in romania one of the definitely status of yes. the of the yes. of the, the, the year, and for me it's great. I agree. I mean, I think it's, 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 challenge. it's a challenge. It's a challenge for the foreign consumer. It's challenging, challenging politically. Yeah. I think it challenges us and, and, and uh, how we um, look at brands. You know, in terms of it makes you think, no? That that's very yes. good, no? Yes. Uh, we had last night one of the judges um, had uh, read the whole paper that was submitted to. The and awards and uh, explained a bit more in detail about how successful it had been and how they had uh, managed, uh, it was a period of time where they had both brands, they had the original brand and the hmm. Starman and Stripes brand yeah. side by side uh, for a period of time to see uh, what the reaction was. Yeah. So we got more information but uh, just interested in other yeah. views, was it? Uh, you, you, you talk about the piano and this is a very pioneering campaign mm -hmm. because yeah. I, I can't remember. I, as everyone, we are th uh, uh, always seeing campaigns. No, we are uh, we, we feed for campaigns. No, yes. and basically all, all the world. I can't remember uh, a creative uh, team at the uh, agency, a client, who affect to change yes. his brand in a in so deep yes. way. Yes. It's pioneering and it's very, very, very brave. A very brave brand manager or marketing mm, manager yeah. to, to... I don't know if brave manager. or crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he deserves my, yeah. my, my whole... You must be very brave for our winning problems. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's it's good. Good. But everything, uh, the point is that everything starts with the packaging. Yeah. And that yeah. is where starts the campaign. And it's something very important with our, with our products, mm -hmm. with the products we sell. That, that's why... You know, it's the beginning of the story. Then you can, you can, you can, you can, you can make the storytelling. But you can, you, you must have the, the packaging change. Mm -hmm. you, have, you must change from your from your core, you from your heart. Yeah, you, and, 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 and you start, start with grow. with a yeah. thing that yeah. is a, a, it's a little thing. And yeah. also, I think it's, 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 it's very brave because it is assuming this campaign that the reaction of the consumers is going to be mm. that, that reaction. Yeah, exactly. and, and that's very intelligent because if you do the research probably they don't say it. Yeah. And There's you know the people so well that you know that if you do that, they're it's going to react just the other way. It's right? probably so one person deficient, yeah. no? Yeah. Against yeah. everyone. And and you are crazy, crazy. I say, yes, I, am. I am the flag, <laughs> and go. Yeah. And, and probably he has really a, 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 a mm. little sex. Yes, yeah. probably what you have said is, is totally true, that mm. I, it's very difficult that a research would predict what is going to happen. Mm. Exactly. Mm. So it's better. Okay. okay, well, let's uh, move on. Uh, Margo, please. Well, I agree with my colleagues. <laughs> because I, I was thinking about Tesco or American Rome, but I prefer American, American Rome. It's about all the things he, he has said, and uh, you agree. I think it's a question, a question of, uh, I think we live uh, times of political correction. 
and everything has to pass a test, and everything has to be sure and uh, sure in a times where nobody is sure about their own selves. So I think this is uh, very special because they are very brave for doing that, for changing that, and with a delicate uh, issue that it's the patriotic sense. Uh, they go mad and, and have a lot of problems, but they take the risk to, to do it. So I think in these times it's good to, to, be, to give a chance to these kind of ideas because marketing and advertising are going to the conservative way. Not, not, not only marketing and advertising, all our lives and, and the crisis in Europe are making the people more afraid <coughs> of taking challenges. So I think it's a double, a double effort. Do you work in Spain, the same, the same concept? But yes, I think so. Yeah. I think we have the same, the same feelings about America and mm -hmm. no? yeah. things. Yeah. But this is especially because the Romanians, don't forget here in Spain, they are not very well uh, yeah. 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 The police uh, hit them, the people in the street. So I think it's uh, it's very brave. That that the Marines must say, I am America. <laughs> they were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I think uh, they are the in, in, in the end of the list of Europe. So it's very brave to say, no, I don't want to be American. I'm proud to be Romanian. So I think it's, uh, it's a very great campaign. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So for me, um, I like to look at this kind of art, of art because I'm not coming from marketing sector or something yeah. like that. I'm journalist and I'm working as social media, so okay. I want to look at this art as a consumer position. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to talk about Pillow's campaign uh -huh. and the Coca-Cola, both of them, because um, I know as um, to change behavior of consumer is, is very brave you know, for, for this kind of campaign. So, and Pilo, I know it's innovative because just to put a new, a new, a new date or a new letters on, on the product is, is brave, I think. And the other one, the Coca Cola ones, I think it's very difficult for an enterprise, for a, for a brand, to talk about two products, Coca Cola Zero and the other one. And, and do not talk negative about one. So it's, for me, it's, it's the best one, I think. So Coca-Cola is your favorite, number one? No, number one, Pillow. Pillow, yeah. okay. okay. It's more innovative, I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so, uh, Javier. Yeah, okay. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm the original Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would like to say that for me, the important thing about Tesco is not the idea, because I do think it's not going to last for 40 years. I don't think uh, it is really practical, because when you are in a metro station, normally you have three or four minutes, and in three or four minutes you cannot buy your purchase. You don't have time for that. I don't think it's very intelligent, because you have to put it in all the train stations if you want people to use it, not in one. But I think it's very powerful because of the consumer insight, which is I'm bored waiting for something and they give me a game, an experience, <coughs> and I can spend a great time while I wait for the metro. That, that's the good thing about this idea, uh, that somebody has thought about people bored yeah. and proposing them to play. <coughs> because <coughs> you can buy this by your phone, by your smartphone. You don't need this wall. But you, I like this because it's a game, yeah, yeah. and you play while you wait for the metro. Yeah. Okay, yes. and that that for me is a strong thing about it. Entertainment and, yeah. and useful for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. A very yeah. curious way to see yeah. it. Can I see some, say something? <coughs> and when I was, uh, I, I just told I was in Sydney uh, uh, one month before, and I see the same concept of the of the the Tesco, Tesco but Bullworth and it was on this place on how do you say Mupis, no Mupis, yeah. J.D. Cox and all these Mupis. You see, so you play, um, you go with the, you no, know, you scan with your, um, with your, uh, with your smartphone the 
little products because on the Mupi is not so big like mm -hmm. the metro, but you go on the street and uh, waiting the red to, to cross the street or waiting for the bus, no, because it was all Sydney and toda la ciudad, mm -hmm. no, all Sydney, and then you can, uh, the same, you can scan the products and then they send uh, the next day, they say, oh, I don't know, they send it to your home, but what's Woolworth, not Tesco, no, it was the same system, mm -hmm. but more more in the city, more place in the city, mm -hmm. and I saw it in, in Australia and Sydney and it was interesting, no, because it's the same thing you are speaking here about Tesco and, and the Korea, no, in Korea, in the metro, no. Mine have been said apart from one, so I'll go with that. I don't know if it's my favourite. Um, was the M and M's campaign? Um, I just thought I think there's a bit of me that feels like it was quite a novelty project, but I think it really merges like the real world new digital technology and does it in a really interesting way. The advert's terrible, so just ignore that. But I think if you ignore the advert, the execution is just incredible. I think it's, when we talk about each award should be pioneering in some respect, and I think that this is a kind of campaign of a, that's a pioneering way of agencies and clients working together in the 21st century. So I think to find out that one nugget of information that Google are filming the kind of street view and then reacting quickly enough to actually build a full campaign around that so it's all captured, then pulling that into an advertising idea and then getting all of that kind of engagement, I just think it's incredible. I mean, hats off to the clients for signing off so fast, hats off for the agency being able to deliver it so quickly um, because I think there's just so many hoops to jump through from getting spaces in cities to put up the the advertising, which can't have been cheap, like the budgets must have been massive. But I think it's just a really, really smart, reactive idea, and that's the feature because that's how consumers live their lives. They don't wait for huge big <coughs> campaigns anymore. You can spend six months planning a campaign, they see it once, and the next campaign arrives and it's gone. So just responding to that real world scenario to get an incredible amount of talkability from press and in social media, and then ultimately engage their consumers, I thought was great. I, I, I'm pretty unique. I, I can't think of any other brand that has used that option, is it? No. But I think I just thought that's the thing about piece of information. I mean, it must have somebody must have had a friend at Google, or it has to be the inside information yeah. to pull that yeah. off. Because <coughs> why it can't be replicated? Do you think, because you need to know that it, do you think it was an exclusive thing that uh, Mars got? I don't know. I think I, somebody somewhere just knew that it was happening, and where that came up on the chain. I mean, it could have just been anywhere. Well, but all, think, of all of the brands who may have used that. <laughs> I mean, I just think like the whole process of, I'd love to know the process that happened from finding out that bit of information to, to it happening, because to get that many yeses, yeah. that must, the time scales to get that many yeses and get the money and do all the creative must have been so, so tight. Uh, hats off. Good, okay. Well, uh, Paco. <coughs> um, you know, of course, um, Tesco and uh, Nike, that I haven't heard about it uh, yet, and uh, Nissan uh, are going to be among my top uh, favorite uh, ideas here um, in the selection of, uh, of the 21s. Um, <coughs> but also, I try to put a lot of uh, tender on the ideas that allow the little ones to stand out. Okay. And uh, you were mentioning before um, uh, British Creative uh, OVB, uh, there was another one uh, that I think uh, he was uh, an account uh, person called uh, Frank Lowe, yes. who usually said, this is a risky business, but the major risk is not to take a risk. Yeah which is an interesting uh, thought, and that especially applies on the you know, small advertisers. And that is why I've liked it a lot, uh, the Sea Life case, um, um, because um, with, uh, I mean, it, it, it's one once in a lifetime campaign for these guys. Mm -hmm. I can imagine the agency proposing the entire um, idea to the client an idea that involves a, lo a lot of risk because it might work and it might not work, and if it doesn't work, it may not work because of the lack, purely <laughs> and simple because of the lack. But they took the chance uh, and the risk to uh, move forward and apply that uh, campaign that is 
I, I can imagine once in a lifetime uh, campaign for these for these guys and the return on, on of the investment. I, I guess it has been uh, tremendous, especially for Spain. Especially for Spain. Especially for Spain, yes, because, but, because but, of but, some but, other parallel yeah. things. But I guess that uh, in Germany, I mean, it has been, you know, in terms of brand awareness, one of the uh, top ones in uh, you will, that period. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't aware, obviously, we were all aware of the Oxford student in the World Cup. I didn't, I wasn't aware of the Brands Association. I didn't. <coughs> the, the Octopus yeah. was uh, one and uh, yes. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know of, in the of, of, of how it was used. Yeah. But I just know it was, uh, there was a brand behind it. I didn't know it was a marketing yes. idea. I remember the octopus, but I don't remember the yeah, aquarium. Yeah. That is because we were in Spain. Mm -hmm. But yes. I can tell you in that Germany. people in Germany, oh, I see. Yeah, I see. people in Germany knew exactly the, the whole story. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so that is your number one. That is my number one. Thank you. Okay, last one before we have a break. Uh, Ricardo. Okay. Uh, yes, I have even more than three ideas that I have liked really very much. Uh, but uh, not being very original, my favorite one is Tesco one. Uh, why? Because I think that it is not a very good idea. I think that uh, even even I, I really think that probably has been a failure. <coughs> I don't think that it will succeed. But there is two worlds, the world of uh, the commerce online and the world of the, of the commerce uh, offline or, or physical commerce mm -hmm. that are totally disconnected. And I think that this is one of the first <coughs> efforts to make them together. And I think that in the future we will see many of these efforts, unfortunately many of them will be successful. So I think that is a very pioneering idea, a very dare idea, and a very, a very inspiring idea. Um, um, for sure, mm -hmm. maybe uh, in the future that is not going, we will not see uh, any followers of this idea or uh, changes of them, but uh, I think that it is worth to, uh, yes. to do something like this. The so idea, the idea is good, but the business is not, because uh, exactly. when I was asking in the, in the in the in the Woolworth people in the in the marketing festival I was in, in Sydney, they told me no, this is not a business. We are exactly. only making, exactly. a, we are mo only looking what happens, ah. only to see. So, exactly. so you have to take care because business. if you give a price to a campaign who is not business behind, no, but, to, this but, is your thing, no? Because we are the jury. Think, yes, but I think that we have <coughs> that we have to make this payment. I mean, in the in, in the world, if there are, uh, if if there is no many experiments that mm -hmm. are a failure, mm -hmm. we will not have a uh, future, we will not have uh, progress. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is one of these experiments. Probably it's not going to be very successful at all. I think mm -hmm. that probably <coughs> has been uh, even a, a failure in terms of sales, but I'm sure that in the future uh, we will have something more bold, something more uh, the pure that, 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 that will work. No, but also it's a, a brand image campaign. Yes, no, also, is not, uh, it's just what, business. Is, is the it's how, how position Absolutely. Is on, Absolutely. on <coughs> people. Uh, I think it's going to, to, to offer the engagement process yes. and experience yes. with the customer. And also to activate the word mouth of the customer. I think mm -hmm. everybody Absolutely. through mm -hmm. internet is going to send. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, this power is something yeah. that sometimes yeah. is very, yes. very difficult to activate. And also it's making, I think that it's making people think in that, that, that uh, there is that, that there should be bridges between the uh, internet world and the real world. And we will, find, we will have to find these bridges. Important. It's okay, we'll have a break there. You can relax. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to talk about Tesco or uh, Iranian chocolate bars. You can talk about whatever you want. Okay. Uh,